Thank you for joining this pediatric urology discussions for the urology exit exam today. Thank you for the trainee who has agreed to record the session. Your scenario is a patient diagnosed to have posterior urethral valve in the antenatal scan. And uh, the, now the patient drawn by the normal delivery and uh, he is presenting to the clinic of course taken by the uh, brought by the parents and uh, his age is six months. How antenatal scans can help to diagnose posterior urethral valve? Um, so antenatal scans uh, will pick up the amniotic uh, fluid uh, in, the, in the in the child, uh, and that will uh, if there's if this posterior urethral valve uh, the fetus tend to it does not uh, urinate, and hence there will be less amniotic fluid. Okay. Any other findings you can say? Uh, the ch the child will uh, is likely to have uh, uh, less surfactant in his uh, lungs as well. Uh, so the child will um, need some uh, respiratory support after birth. Um, if these things are picked up on the antenatal scan, uh, then appropriate measurements, uh, appropriate measures can be made uh, at the delivery to help the child with um, um, uh, the respiratory uh, uh, issues and also to plan uro further urological investigations and management. Yeah, you can also bring in the actual posterior urethral valve finding also. What is the finding? What is the keyhole sign? Uh, so the abnormality is uh, there is bicuspid or a, a fold of tissue from the very montanum uh, um, to the membranous part of the urethra. There are uh, three types of um, posterior urethral valves. Type one is the bicusp valves. Uh, from the very tenum to the uh, membranous urethra. Um, 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 uh, type two is a fold um, that is non-obstructive, and type three is a sheet membrane uh, uh, occupying the entire circumference of the urethra. Um, uh, and the uh, keyhole sign is the dilatation of the, of the posterior urethra and the bladder neck uh, on ultrasound scan. Yeah, so while developing, while ex explaining the three types, the, the, the first type is more of button like uh, anteriorly placed valve and uh, it's bicuspid and uh, while the type 2 is much very rare where it's a posteriorly placed valve towards the bladder neck. The type 3 is the one like the proper valve but usually it has got a central hole. The central hole could be ju just uh, iatrogenic when somebody try to pass a catheter when the child is not passing urine etc and okay. uh, the keyhole sign as we know the keyhole has got like a dilated component and a vertical component the exact keyhole will be seen in the ultrasound where the dilated component is the posterior urethra and the, the vertical component is the continuation of the urethra so it's one of the characteristic finding as you said because of the decreased urine output the patient will be having uh, less amniotic fluid less surfactant so during the birth patient the baby require a cesarean section the normal parturition may not happen and uh, the respiratory related uh, lung attrition or other findings which may result in the even survival will be questioned is there any treatment available in the antenatal period for the posterior urethral valve um Place, um, a placement of uh, uh, amniotic shunt uh, um, is, is possible, uh, but the long-term effects of, uh, of this is, um, is, 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 is uncertain to see if this actually uh, helps. Um, that's, um, yeah. that's all I know about the prenatal. Yeah. Yeah, you can bring in the Pluto study, Pluto study or Pluto trial. The trial is mainly to compare the conservative management of antenatally diagnosed posterior urethral valve. And the second group is the one which underwent vesico amniotic shunt. Since the shunt is made, the urine is diverted into the amniotic cavity, producing as much of amniotic fluid as possible. There are also studies which have done a transurethral antenatal posterior urethral valve fulguration but again they are all very sim simple few case studies 
Regarding the Pluto trial, there is no big advantage in treating the antenatal posterior valve by using the shunt because number one placement of shunt is quite difficult. Number two, after placing the shunt, the shunt can displace so the whole surgery can go out necessary waste of time and surgical exercise. And so there is no big advantage in the antenatal intervention as such. And there is a chance for the loss of baby because of uh, the intervention itself, whether it's an ultrasound guided intervention, etc. So this child is now growing well and uh, he is passing urine with a very slow stream and how are you going to evaluate him? Um, so this child uh, um, will need evaluation by means of um, the approach should be A, B, C, D, E approach. Um, um, as he is passing urine with a slow stream, I'm concerned that there's, um, he has a posterior valve, uh, which might be type two, uh, sorry, type three. Um, so I will initially insert a, a urinary catheter um, or a, 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 a urinary catheter to uh, uh, break and bypass this uh, posterior urethral valve. Uh, this patient, depending on uh, the posterior uh, post catheter residual, this patient should be treated as um, uh, a urinary retention. And if he has any diure uh, diuresis, they should be treated accordingly and checking his uh, uh, electrolytes in his bloods. Uh, and doing an FPC and treating any electrolyte abnormality and any uh, uh, signs of infection should be treated, uh, treated accordingly as well. Okay, what will be the long-term prognosis of this patient? Uh, I think once uh, this posterior urethral valve has been treated uh, appropriately and the appropriate management uh, will be transurethral uh, resection or transurethral incision of uh, posterior urethral valve, um the the, the long-term management is is good um, the long-term outcomes are good of of uh, this surgery what are the methods by which you can ablate the valve say for example our patient um, you need to say about the investigations and then the treatment investigations you can do even a urethrogram but it's quite clumsy and non-contributory but a diagnostic flexible stroscopy is more than enough to clinch the diagnosis so this patient has got posterior valve found during the flexible pediatric cystoscope. So how are you going to do the definitive treatment? So the definitive treatment will involve uh, a, 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 a cystoscopy, a GS cystoscopy, and either ablation or resection of the valves uh, under general anesthesia. Uh, this can be done with a, 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 a knife um, uh, to cut, this, um, uh, cut these valves. Instead of saying the knife, you can say something like a Collins knife because knife Collins means knife. it becomes appears like an open surgery. So it's like an endoscopic pediatric cystoscope and using uh, Collins knife equivalent pediatric equipments or accessories. And of course you can use the Bugby with uh, bipolar diathermy. You can use the Holmium laser. There are some publications recently on Holmium laser to ablate the valve. And after ablating, you there are two groups. In one group of thinking, they just left it without any catheter because uh, once it is nicely opened up, the patient should pass urine through that. That will help the valve ablated area to heal and epithelize nicely. But there is another group which always keep a catheter and then maybe give a trial void after 24 to 48 hours. And how are you going to follow up these patients? Uh, so follow up uh, should be required by uh, another cystoscopy or uh, an MCUG in, uh, in three months uh, time uh, to assess if um, uh, the urine is being emptied completely uh, or if there's any evidence of uh, uh, a residual valve that, need, that will need further assessment. Uh, this child um, will benefit from a, a documented DMSA scan that will document the uh, function of the kidney and uh, any uh, r resulted scarring from any infections he might have had in the past. Yeah, so again you can make the answer a little bit more comprehensive by stating that you will do investigation specific to posturethral valve to make sure the ablation does done well. For that you have mentioned the investigations quite appropriately. But other things looking broad is what is the input from the nephrologist, how he is uh, EGFR and kidney functions are 
working like including the blood pressure measurement because these children can end up in quite significant uh, hypertension at young age itself so he needs a wholesome care with the combination with the nephrology care and from your point if the valve is nicely ablated you can follow up this patient there is a role for follow up urodynamics to make sure that the bladder uh, pressure is nicely maintained and in case if there is a high pressure voiding you may have to think about the other things like uh, what is the choice in case if the patient has got a high pressure voiding uh, if the patient has high uh, pressure voiding the choices are going to be uh, medication which is anticholinergics um, uh, and um, um, what anticholinergic uh, is your choice Sorry? What is your choice of anticholinergic? Uh, oxybutynin. Yeah. So the you need to be a little bit more very clear in that oxybutynin 0.1 to 0.2 milligram per kg to be given like twice or thrice in a day, or you can just say the general pediatric dose at least. And then th there is a good role for the other anticholinergics also. There are some studies on mirabegron in pediatrics, but oxybutynin is usually very good for the pediatrics. And as the child grows, in case if the anticholinergic fails, the next day stop is? Uh, the, as the child grows uh, and this is not helping, then the, then the options are going to be either uh, intermittent catheterization uh, versus more invasive treatment options like uh, uh, cystoplasty. Before jumping to cystoplasty, you can mention botulinum toxin. So botulinum toxin, botulinum. the normal dose, something like 100 international units. Uh, if the child bladder is nicely developed, 100 international units is not a bad choice. But if the bladder volume is less, you may have to appropriately reduce the dose. And uh, the children have the high propensity to end up not able to void after injection of the botulinum toxin. We need to keep this in mind and uh, the child may require long term intermittent self catheterization. Given all the treatment falling in place, in spite of this, the child may develop in-stage renal disease and yearly CKD. The long-term mortality is always there. So the parents should be appropriately counseled in that aspect. Okay? Okay. Okay. Good. Anything you want to add before we finish this? Uh, no, uh, Mr. D. Thank you. I think uh, I did not know about the Pluto study um, at all. Um, thank you. Yeah, don't worry much about the study. It's only to make the presentation into like a much more literature based. But otherwise, if you are able to bring the actual outcomes of the studies, that's more than enough. Fine. Okay. okay. Good. Yep. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. D.